What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. In today's video, we're going to jump into the test live version of Conan Exiles. This is test live update 2.8. So anything that I go over in this video could change by the time it comes to live, but we're going to dive right into it. One of the exciting things that's coming with this is emotes for your followers. And when I read this initially, I thought emotes just for your human followers, but it happens to include some pets as well. And if you guys want to know where all of the new emotes are on the Exiled Lands and the Isle of Sifta, what I need you to do is whack that like button. I'm going to guess that we're going to get up to 500 likes on this video before I can even turn around and wake up tomorrow morning. So when I'm done making this video, I'm going to make a video with all of those emotes. And hopefully when I wake up, I see this video has at least 500 likes and I'll post that other video. Now, the most important thing that you're going to ask yourself about the new emote system is whether dancers can choose their own dance. And what I'm going to do is just go in here, show you how it works on Leonili the Accursed. We're going to go to emote. I'm going to tell her to stop playing the emote. She's actually going to do a different dance. So essentially, you can do this a couple of different ways. I have a video showing you how to move your entertainer to get them to do the dance that you want. But if you know the dance that you want them to do, you can go up, you can interact with them, go to behavior, go to emote, pick the emote that you want. I'm going to pick belly dance and boom, she is going to belly dance. So essentially the emote is going to overwrite the dance that they're doing naturally. Now that may not be the most important question that you had today or the question that was on your mind. It was on my mind since the moment that I read the patch notes. So I wanted to cover it right away. The other thing that is very cool about this is that if I tell her to follow me, she immediately stops emoting and that happens across all the different followers. So when you tell them to follow, they stop emoting. Now the interesting thing about this is that dancers or entertainers prior to this update would dance in between fighting and that caused some issue with actually engaging in fights they didn't know whether to dance they didn't know whether to fight now they're just ready for a fight but look at my screen currently i am entertained at the max 10 so even though she's not dancing i am entertained at the max which could mean that the best thrall to take with you in the future could possibly be an entertainer when i tell her to stop following or place her again she is actually going to start her dance again now this is the emote dance that she's doing she is not doing a normal dance they simply revert back to whatever emote you had them set on so if i tell delincia here to follow me she will stand up and then when I tell her to stop following me just like that, boom, she's going to sit back down. So this is a really cool way to place your thralls in different areas or situations and have them doing different emotes. If you want to get rid of the emote entirely, just go into behavior, go to emote and tell them clear emote and they're just going to stand there. One of the other things that I think is going to be a big topic is the fence foundation stacking. So as you can see, I have this set up to be able to stack the way that you used to, and it simply will not allow you to place a piece in that location. I did, however, get while I was flying, not while I was standing on the ground, I did get these to place a pretty close. So let's see as close as we can place it it looks like right about there and then we'll do that again and right about there and then we'll do it one more time here so even though there's not a fence foundation stacking the way that it used to be you can still set it up just like this and you can see those those tips are almost touching it's it's yeah 
I mean, I'm not going to go any deeper than that. Uh, I'll just say that the tips are almost touching. However, you do run into issues when you're placing multiples. So as you can see, these two are too close. The middle two are good. So a little bit of extra space in between them, that's what's important. So these two are far enough apart. Okay, so let's see if I get this to line up properly here. And we're probably about the same height there. So bring it in and then just out just a little and boom, let's see how we did that time. I think that one is going to be uh, far enough apart that it's not going to make a difference. So as you can see, I should be able to place in both of those spots. So that's still decently close. I mean, it's definitely not fence foundation stacking like you were able to do before, but it is still possible. However, you do have to eyeball this. So you're going to want to do this in sandstone to start. Actually, it probably doesn't matter because realistically, you just walk back up and pick the piece back up put it back in your inventory and line it all up again so it's still decently close but not as close as it was before Let's jump into some of the things that I saw in the patch notes here that stuck out to me. So we have combat fixes. There's a couple of those. Uh, fix an issue where left hand side attacks from mounted rhino would cause no damage. So that's good. You can now attack on both sides. Fixed a rare issue where thralls would remain in a state where they could not attack nor get attacked under specific circumstances. I personally haven't experienced anything like that. I do from time to time get the comments on older videos where I showed people how to work around your thrall not attacking, but I'm not sure that that's this issue or something different entirely. Hopefully the thralls not attacking issue is sorted out at this point. AI and thrall fixes, there's quite a bit in here. I'm just gonna blow through them real quick. So mammoths now rotate in a less janky way. Shagai horror pets and now have a projectile for their ranged attack, which is cool. Rhinos should no longer moonwalk out of combat. I don't think I've ever seen them moonwalk out of combat, but apparently that's a thing. Hopefully at some point they'll break them again so that they can start flying as all rhinos should be able to do. NPCs should no longer move when attacking. The undead nations of the Sanctuary of the Serpent signed a treaty and thus undead archers and undead hyenas should no longer attack each other. Fixed an issue where thralls and NPCs would spawn with XX unarmed in their inventory. This is essentially what happens when I go in my videos, I go to fight something and they just try to punch me to death. This is what's going on. So hopefully that's fixed. I know I was fighting Seth the other day in the wine cellar and he tried to punch me to death. So hopefully he's got his truncheon back and he can actually hit me with that. Craxis will now spawn where he's supposed to at the rate he's supposed to. This is really cool because I actually haven't seen Craxis spawn in that place since before for SIP to launch. So hopefully that's fixed now. I actually really want to dive into what drops in his loot table. So hopefully that's fixed and hopefully we can go and get those items. Thralls that have been knocked down should no longer forget their guarding location. So this is where your thrall kind of forgets where you place them. Hopefully that's fixed and we see them returning to the spot that they should be in. Thralls should now be able to engage with giant enemies correctly instead of getting confused at the complex concept of a straight line. I hope this fixes what's been going on with the Red Mother fight. I'm going to test that out. You'll be seeing that video, but I haven't tested it yet. Fixed an issue where the purge would spawn inside treehouse bases. Now, I think I need to elaborate a little bit on this one. If you have a treehouse base that does not have access from ground level, this is not what they're talking about. They are not talking about making it so you can have a purge-free base because you built a treehouse. They're talking about certain instances where the purge would always spawn inside the treehouse, whether you had connection to the ground or not. So keep that in mind. Do not build a base where you don't have connection to the ground. Balance updates, and I'm only pointing this out because there's a single thing under this category, and it's about gold nodes. They should require a minimum of two chops instead of one. 
I bring this up because there's been a lot of chat about these oh, ferroxic daggers and poison and all this different stuff from the PvP community. And yes, I did a video kind of showing how to get around that. I've been called out by the PvP community letting me know that I should no longer make videos regarding PvP. I want to know if you feel the same way in the comment section below, and I might show you what a video where I don't pay attention to PvP would look like in the future. General bug fixes. Under this, there's not a whole lot that I feel like I need to spend a whole lot of time on. I'll cover a couple here. So there was an issue where unlocked fast travel locations would be lost when transferring servers. That should be fixed now. You should be able to fast travel to any obelisk that you've unlocked on a different server. The sandstorm should no longer kill players in the broken highway if they have not crossed it yet or if they load in that area area while a sandstorm is ongoing. Additionally, they fixed some hair colors that showed incorrectly, and that should be good for all of you that want to dye your hair the proper color. They've also added a new server queuing system for when you're joining a server that's full so that you don't have to repeatedly click join. You can just click it once you go into a queue, and then you will automatically load in once a spot becomes available. And that's all I'm going to cover in this video. I will link the patch notes in the description of this video. I normally don't cover test live because a lot of things can change in test live. So I do wait for the live version to come out before making guides most of the time. However, I'd like to know in the comment section below if you enjoy me covering the test live and if you feel like I should do that more in the future. The whack moments in this video were sponsored by my legendary supporters. If you'd like to become a member, you can click the button below that says join. That'll give you all the details. And if you want to continue the fun, there's two videos on the screen. You can pick one of those to watch next. Please don't forget to whack the like button. And if you're new to the channel, I'd encourage you to click that subscribe button. Click that bell so you get notified when I upload another video.